Hi, my name is Scott Naismith, I'm a landscape painter. You might have seen my colour tutorial video, Hue and Saturation. The colour wheel that I talked about in the last video is a conventional colour wheel. It's a colour wheel taught to everyone in schools and colleges around the world. And it is in fact lies, technically. So you have a choice. You can take the blue pill and you switch off this video in blissful ignorance and you'll still struggle to make a bright green and mix a vivid purple. Or you can take the red pill and I'll show you just how deep this rabbit hole goes. To explain the true colour wheel we've got to explain the difference between additive colour and subtractive colour. Let's take additive colour first. Additive colour is the term used for colour created by light. Primaries of additive colour cannot be disputed, they can be seen at play in your TV screens and your monitors. And those primaries are red, green and blue, abbreviated to RGB. With additive colour, we start with complete darkness, black. When these primary light sources overlap, they start to mix to give the secondary colours. When light is added together like this, the resultant mix will always be brighter. We can view these secondaries at an equal value if we reduce the intensity of the two lights that make that secondary colour. When all the primary colour lights are mixed, we get white, which you can see in the middle of this diagram. So what about subtractive colour? When we see an object or substance or paint, we only see the colour that is not absorbed by that substance. Black objects are absorbing all light. White objects are reflecting all that light and absorbing no light. What's important to note when mixing paint is that absorption properties of two different colours are added together, which subtracts the amount of light reflected to our eyes, hence the subtractive colour system. So let's take a blue object, blue being a colour that most of us would consider to be a primary colour. Looking back at the RGB light diagram, we know that if we see a blue object, it must be absorbing all the red and green light, leaving only blue reflected. The conventional colour wheel tells us that when we mix primary yellow with primary blue, we get secondary green. But this can't be true, because if we take yellow paint, it absorbs blue light. And if we add the absorption properties of blue, red and green light, we will now have a paint that absorbs all three lights to some levels, which would make that colour a tertiary colour, or a colour that you might call as a painter a muddy colour. So the definition of a primary colour is a colour that cannot be mixed. And on the subtractive colour system, i.e. mixing paint, a primary colour must be a colour that only absorbs one of the RGB lights. Lost? Don't worry, here are the real primaries for paint mixing. Cyan, magenta, yellow. Some of you will Some be of familiar you. with CMYK, the type of colour used in printers. And here's a subtractive colour diagram for how these colours mix, and all three of the colours mixing in the middle to make black. Black being a colour that absorbs all light. So we start with white and begin to subtract the three primaries one by one by absorption. Cyan absorbs red, magenta the green and yellow the blue from the light until all light is absorbed in the black. So let's meet the true colour wheel. Primaries, cyan, magenta, yellow. Secondaries, RGB, red, green, Fill in the missing parts with the transitions between these secondary primaries and there we have it, the CMY colour. A little bit different to the colour wheel in my previous video and we can see the difference, the direct difference here. So some of you might be thinking, what about purple, what about orange? They are important colours. Uh, they should be represented. Well they are, they are represented in the transitions between the secondaries and the primaries. We only consider orange and purple to be important because we've got early learned vocabulary that describes these two colours. We've even got a fruit named after one of them. 
And because most of us don't learn the terms of cyan and magenta when we're two years old learning our colours, it's possible that we perceive these colours differently. It's possible that we don't really see the significant enough differences between the colours cyan and blue and the colours magenta and red because of a lack of vocabulary from a young age. So what does all this mean for colour mixing? Well this true colour feel is important for mixing bright secondaries with the correct primaries. Ever used a, an introductory set of paints which only has the primaries in it? Useless, aren't they? I mean some of them even give you green because there's no chance of you making a green with the blue and the yellow that they give you. So for mixing secondaries you should be looking to magenta and cyan and yellow. And since we all knew yellow was a primary colour, we're going to be looking at magenta and cyan. You can't just go into your local art store and they've got loads of paints that are magenta and cyan. There's very few of them are actually called magenta and cyan. We have uh, magenta options of permanent magenta, quinacridone red, rose lake, permanent rose, and even alizarin crimson is an option for a magenta. Cadmium red is not a primary colour. For cyan, Schmink Mussini oil paints actually do a transparent cyan. Two more conventional options for cyan are cerulean blue and manganese blue. Both of these paints, ironically and wrongly called blue. They're cyan. Ultramarine blue is not a primary colour. So using these tubes of paint that I've talked about, for the magenta and the cyan, you can actually mix a secondary blue and a secondary red. Yes, blue and red are secondary colours. Don't believe me? Here's a demo. Okay, in this demonstration I've used a cerulean blue to get something close to cyan. And I'm going to be using a permanent magenta for the other primary Color. The resultant colour should be, by our new colour wheel, blue. Blue, which is conventionally known as a primary colour which can be mixed. Okay, the method I'm going to use to uh, show you this colour mixing is I'm going to glaze using an oil painting medium. I'm going to glaze the magenta on top of the cyan. A little bit of medium first and then I'm just going to add my paint. Still think ultramarine blue is a primary colour? And just to prove what colour I've added to the top of this, I'm just going to wipe it clean. That there is magenta. So that's why red and blue are not primaries. Thanks a lot for watching the video. My name's Scott Naismith. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and indeed this channel.